This video is brought to you by SLS Academy. Welcome back to another episode of Home Staging TV. I'm your host, Tori Toth. Today, I have a very special guest with me who's going to help us figure out how to bridge the gap between real estate agents and home stagers and even home sellers during this time. So first of all, I want to welcome Lloyda Blasquez. And uh, hi, how are you? <laughs> hi, Tori. Thanks. I'm really excited to, to be joining you. And you are a real estate agent in Southern California, and you have a background in um, marketing management, and you also have a passion for real estate. So first of all, when did you get yes. started in real estate? I got started in real estate in 2015. And before that, I worked in marketing and advertising for over eight years. So, and it says in your bio that basically your team thrives online because of the daily practices that you have in place. And you have been pretty transparent online on how um, you go about getting your business and handling your business. So you have over 53,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is amazing. What makes them, what makes your audience keep coming back? Yeah. So I started my YouTube channel when I first got into real estate because I remember back then going online on YouTube and trying to see videos of what it was like to be a real estate agent. And I really wasn't finding a lot from a woman's perspective. So that's why I decided to start putting my journey out there. And eventually I just continued putting out videos in terms of what I was learning and what it was like to be a real estate agent. And that's how I have built it to the 53,000 subscribers that I have, most of which are real estate agents. Now, there's a lot of agents that don't do cold calling or door knocking anymore. And that's primarily how I built my business and what I started doing. Talk about how you've been successful with lead generation in this way, because a lot of people are scared of it. Yeah, it is very scary because you deal with a lot of rejection, a lot, a lot of mean people, people, obviously people don't like to get cold called. Um, one of the sources that I focus a lot on are expired listings. So these are properties that came off the market for one reason or another. And some of these homeowners still have to sell. So I cold call them every single morning and many of them get bombarded with other realtors that are calling them. And they're always telling me, well, where were you when my home was on the market? And all you realtors are vultures and all you guys just want is a listing. So because of my experience, cold calling these people, knowing what they tell me and kind of um, learning how to handle objections, I've been able to now look past through the fact that they're mad, not take it personal, and know that I can actually help them if they are still very serious and motivated when it comes to selling. So what is like, what does your script kind of sound like? What do, what do you say um, when you're either door knocking or cold calling? Which do you prefer yeah. or it doesn't really matter to you? I prefer cold calling just because I am able to talk to more people in an hour compared to door knocking. However, door knocking, I find it with better results because people, when they see me, they're less likely to slam the door on my face compared to if I'm just calling, they could easily just hang up. So usually the script, if I am, say, doing circle prospecting, which is just doing random phone calls around a certain neighborhood, um, I usually try to call neighborhoods where I just listed or I just sold a home. So let's say if I just sold a home, I would call the neighbors and I would say, hey, my name is Lloyda with EXP Realty. Very quickly, just reaching out because I just sold your neighbor's house down the street. We got seven offers in two days. So there's still a lot of families that want to move into your neighborhood. Just wanted to see if you had any plans or know of anybody that's thinking about making a move in the future. So that's usually the line. Usually people tell me yes or no or they're thinking about it, or they might ask me, well, what's my house worth? So lead generation happens in any industry that you are in. And a lot of home stagers will um, go to real estate offices or try and get on the phone with real estate agents. What type of advice do you have for them um, in terms of feeling confident in talking to them and, and maybe even just any tips you have to get their foot in the door? If I was approached by a stager, it would be, what can we offer each other of value? So whether it's staging the property, not just having the furniture come in, but okay, you bring the furniture, you're the stager, but in turn, can we do a video where I promote the home and then promote you so that you can post it on your social media 
or things like that. That way it's like a cross promotion and everybody's gaining some type of benefit from the collaboration or working together. Yeah, I always recommend when I'm when I'm talking with real estate agents, it's creating that winning team. You know, what about for we have a lot of home sellers who uh, watch on this channel. What would you say to them if um, because they may not understand the door knocking and the cold calling, right? Mm -hmm. And you and you yeah. mentioned that they they kind of get offended or mad. So, is there anything that you want to say to them or that you could say to them to get them to understand the value of it? Yes. So one of the reasons that I do cold call, especially these expired listings, are because these homeowners wanted to sell. And many times it happens that the agent that they had was not the right agent and the, the, that agent didn't get the job done because whether the pictures weren't great, the home didn't show well, the home was not easy to show, or maybe it was overpriced. So having the right agent that knows what they're doing is ultimately going to help a homeowner be able to sell for the most that the market will bear. Now, in terms of staging, that's one of the most important things when it comes to actually getting the home sold. There's three reasons why home won't sell, especially in the markets that we have been. Number one is whether or not the home shows well. Number two, it's whether or not it's easy to show. And the third is the price. So if you have all of those three and those are all perfect, then your property is going to sell. But sometimes we see that homeowners um, hire agents that the property doesn't look its best. There's a lot of clutter. It, it could be done better and presented better to the audience, which many times the first place that buyers are looking are on Zillow and websites online. So that's kind of like their inside look to see whether they want to make a decision of actually pursuing and going to see the home or not. In terms of home sellers, what should they be looking for in a real estate agent? See what other homes are selling in that area. Uh, along with that, the marketing, what they're going to do, aside from the just putting the sign in the yard and putting in the MLS, what aggressive type of active marketing they're going to do to get the job done, uh, their track record and how fast or usually how long it takes before they sell a home, and also how easy it is for you to, let's say, if it turns out that you don't want to work with them, if it's easy for you to kind of just break the contract or decide to part ways. What's one of those like marketing, the, like the stronger marketing things that an agent should be doing? Aside from pricing a home correctly, because that's ultimately one of the keys that's going to get the home sold. Aside from that is having professional quality pictures. We still see agents using their cell phone and low light. And sometimes you even see themselves in the, in the mirror, in the bathroom, which yeah. is completely unacceptable. What do you do in terms of marketing that makes you unique? We cold call for our listings. We tell everybody about the home that we just put on the market. We do also a lot of pre-marketing. So all of the followers that we have on social media, many of which are realtors, we do the pre-marketing maybe a few days before, up to a week where we kind of do the coming soon type of thing. And we expose that property before it even goes on the market. And usually that's how we are able to get results as soon as possible, because a lot of these agents have potential buyers or they share it with somebody else. We also share the property to our database. We do the videos, we post it on YouTube, on Instagram. We're all over social media. This is the perfect reason why real estate agents and even home stagers need to be building their online presence um, on social media and also be building their lists because you mentioned yeah. you send that information out to them. And so when you're building these audiences up, you provide a platform for you to actually be selling selling your properties and, or helping in a home seeders case, helping the real estate agent sell the property to someone in the community. And because we have built our list, it, had, it has happened many times where the people in our list are interested in the properties that we have. Let's talk about the housing market right now in, in terms of the pandemic. Um, are houses still selling? Are, are things still moving? Is everything at a standstill? What, what are you seeing out there? We are still seeing a lot of activity, even though the pandemic is going on, the interest, the interest rates are still historically low. So there are those motivated buyers that are still going out there and submitting offers and looking at properties. In terms of actually viewing properties, mostly everything has to be done virtually. If homes are vacant, then a buyer can go with their agent or one other person. I think three people is a the max. They can go and see the home or schedule an appointment 
for the most part, any owner occupied home cannot be shown and everything has to be done virtually. Now, in terms of my personal experience out here in California, uh, I put a home for sale two weeks ago and in two days we got six offers. So there's still a lot of activity from very serious and motivated buyers. So what's involved in a virtual showing for a home seller, for a real estate agent? So in terms of the real estate side, we usually have, whether it's a photographer or the agent sometimes goes to the property, does, uh, takes video, whether it's with the cell phone or the camera or a 360 camera and just records the entire house. And that way we can show it to the buyer or whoever wants to see it so they can almost feel like they're inside the house without having to be there. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of the buyer, it facilitates having uh, to drive out to the home and just get that inside look before they do actually want to proceed and move forward uh, with seeing the home or, or scheduling an appointment. Are you finding people are like making offers based on not actually seeing the home? I am. The way that it's happening is that people are submitting offers subject to inspection. Okay. After they see the virtual tour, after they get all of the details, we try to even get the disclosures up front before we even open escrow. That way people will know exactly what they would be getting into. In that case, it all comes back to the presentation part of everything and how yeah. this home looks exactly. online, how it looks in photos, how it looks in videos, how it looks in lives. Um, and, and that's what, uh, that's why the home staging component is so important in this process. And, um, for all you home sellers and even real estate agents out there listening to this home stagers in our home staging industry, we have pivoted to be able to offer virtual home staging consultations where we are uh, providing our expertise through a zoom call, something similar like this. So we can help sellers get prepared for sale and whether you are already on the market and you're, you're looking for, um, you know, you're looking for a buyer or you're not yet sure if you want to get on the market during this pandemic, you should at least be preparing these properties for sale. So they look great. How do you, I guess, calm nerves, ease stress for home sellers at this time? Something that we do is that we walk them through the entire process from day one until the day that they're sleeping in their new home. So they know exactly how everything's going to happen. Um, in this particular home that we got multiple offers, we opened escrow. The seller initially was very hesitant in regards to putting the home on the market. Her case was very specific. She needs to sell. It's not like she wanted to. Otherwise she might be losing the home. She has a lot of equity in the home but we were able to walk her through the entire process of what everything's going to look like. How do you see this changing the way real estate is being done? I feel that a lot of people are going to start to get back into wanting to buy or sell depending on how the market is. You know, real estate is in cycles and who knows what's going to happen to the market, whether it's tomorrow in two weeks or next month, but we just always have to be prepared. Uh, that's why a lot of, buyers right now, I feel are still taking advantage of the low interest rates, but eventually we might see other type of buyers and different type of sellers. And I get to the point that the people selling are the people that have to sell, not just, Oh, you know, I just wanted to move to a bigger house that has a bigger backyard. If it's not necessary, it's going to kind of weed those people out as well. If you guys have any questions for Loida, make sure you put them in the comments below. Make sure you also subscribe and you can check out this video next for more home staging tips. And until next time, thanks for watching. Thank you.